I'm not broken, and I'm not alone. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, Justice League, The Snyder Cut, Cyborg. Part man, part machine, Victor Stone is a former star athlete at Gotham City University. After a horrific car accident nearly cost him his life, he was saved when his father, scientist Silas Stone, used an apocalyptic mother box to reconstruct his body. In the process, Silas turned Victor into a human computer, organic with biomechatronic body parts. In other words, a cyborg. About to look at Cyborg. Before we do that, though, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall is the figure. And in order to accomplish that, I'm going to grab my trusty tape measure, which as far as I know, doesn't have any organic elements to it. At least, not that I'm aware of. We're going to take it and put it right to the very top of his head. Drag it across just to make sure I don't hit anything along the ways. Stop it right there. Cyborg stands 8.2 inches in height. We can quickly then switch this over to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 20.8 centimeters tall. For your much expected size comparisons, let's bring in the Flash. Roughly, Cyborg is about the same size as Flash. We can also bring in Aquaman, who's quite a bit taller than both of them. I'm having still some difficulty with the legs, ankles on Aquaman. We can also bring in Tactical Suit Batman, who doesn't have as many of the issues that Aquaman has. They're all roughly the same height, and, and, you know, I'm not glazing over and brushing with such a broad brush stroke, but Cyborg is about the same height as Tactical Suit Batman, and it's about the same height as Flash, give or take a few little hairs taller. And, of course, Aquaman, of the figures that we've looked at so far, seems to be the tallest. Moving on to Accessory Town, though I wouldn't necessarily consider a trading card an accessory, he comes packaged with one nonetheless. And again, using a source material for the image that they use on the front of the cards. I know I continue to say I would like to see source material used on front instead of actually taking an image of the figure. People who aren't collecting these cards and so quick to throw these away when they get the figures out of the packaging could really care less. But I think if you are holding on to these cards, like certainly what we've done so far, here's are all the other cards that we've looked at, starting with Batman, then moving on to the Flash, Shortly after that, looked at Aquaman, and then finally looking at Cyborg. I mean, you know, they're good-looking cards. They're a lot better looking, if you ask me, when they're using source material instead of using an image of the figure. Just something I'd like to see with future releases. Holding on to these for the time being, because we're kind of looking through all the figures, eventually these will find their way into a trading card sleeve, where I've been keeping all my other DC Multiverse figures. Do I have the Flash? Yes. There you go. No go fishing on that one. So we'll put those to the side. Again, continuing to collect those. We can also collect more display stands, as in this case, Cyborg comes included with the exact same display stand as all the other figures. Still, they probably could have used a flight stand, but to be fair, you really could use then the flight stands that come included with the black and silver regeneration suit or the return suit for Superman or the blue and the red Superman that we will be looking at. Both those figures reviews will be coming up shortly. You really could use any one of those uh, if you want to have Cyborg in a flight pose. In the meantime, if you want to go museum, then by all means, this is the type of stand that you will want to use. And I'm, again, I'm glad to see that they continue to release these figures with display stands. Put that to the side. Cyborg also comes included with his arm cannon. And before we attach it to his arm, I want to quickly show you guys what it looks like up close. It's not bad. It, you know, it's nicely sculpted. And I will say I do like and appreciate the fact that they dry brush the silver. So there are some more darker areas, sort of recessed areas on the cannon itself. There is, though, one, a few little places where you can see like the blue has bled onto the silver that's around it. You could say it's glowing, pulsating blue. So the fact that it would be enveloping some of the silver around it isn't necessarily too bad of an idea or too big of a problem. I mean, especially when you're seeing it from a distance, you're not going to notice that the blue is there. If there is some bleeding that's happened, again, at least for its credits, it's on the bottom of it. You're not, you're not even going to see it. To replace it on the figure, what you're going to do is grab the figure, grab this side and just yank this off. And when you are yanking off, what you'll see and what will be left behind is a peg. It represents basically one of the only places on the figure that, that isn't really colored. Uh, everything else really on the figure is painted pretty good. We'll talk more about it in a second. 
And then from there, we're going to go ahead and just grab the cannon and just attach it onto that peg, just like that, just to twist it into place. It still gets the afforded hinge joint because the hinge is further up on the, on the, sh on the shoulder, on the elbow right there. So you can still have that bent on the figure. Likely, I'll be displaying him with the arm cannon. Again, the benefit of having a swappable part like this, which so happens to also be the only part that's swappable on this figure, it's nice to be able to swap in and out, change from one to the other. And that's what his, look, that's what his hand looks like. Just quickly to show you the difference between the two. I wouldn't want to just rush straight through this, pop off the arm, discard this. Well, not, not discard it, but put it to the side without showing you the details in the hands as well. Okay. Okay. So we'll put that to the side. So getting a closer look at Cyborg, I mean, you know, I'm happy with this one. I'm happy with how this turned out. Actually, this will be up there. I feel with tactical suit Batman is my favorites we've looked at so far. The likeness to the way he looks in the movie is I feel quite on. The face, while still coming across a little pasty on paint, actually looks a lot cleaner than some of the other figures that we've looked at so far. He does have the little glowing blue, though it's not glowing blue here on the figure, but he does have the blue in the middle there. And he does also have the one red eye, which I do like the coloring that they went with, kind of a metallic red. Spin it around to the side, spin it around to the back so you can see the detailing on this as well. If they haven't already planned this out, I could imagine that they probably will give him the shielded face sculpt as well as maybe a variant figure down the road. Paint on this guy, like I said, is pretty good. There are just a few little places, very, very small places where the paint has bled onto the face, but it's so marginal, you barely even see it's there. So happy. Points for the head sculpt. Points as well for the body is also like, I really feel like this is one of their better sculpted figures. It certainly works well to Cyborg's credit that he's a very intricate figure to start off with. Well, character design is very intricate that it would have to translate to a pretty complicated molded figure. And certainly there's a lot to take in here when you're looking at the figure. Valid points, I suppose, could be made that, yeah, it's, it's a lot of the same color. They would have used a darker plastic and then brushed over top of it the silver, but then still even after that, maybe, yes, some darker colors of the silver probably could be incorporated in there as well, because everything that you're seeing on the figure is pretty much locked in on that same silver. There is one problem I have with this figure, and it's this area right here. I'm guessing what it's supposed to be is the center area, like in the movie, is a glowing piece. What they've done is they've painted the area around the chest to mimic, I'm guessing, the fact it glows. But it sort of just looks like he's rusting instead. To be fair, though, I mean, if they had left this off, there would have been even more just a lot of the same silver. So it's really kind of hard to say, would I have wanted to see it without it? But being that I don't have a chance to see it without it, it's hard to properly gauge whether I would have liked it a lot more or a lot less. I just feel like it looks more like dripping something rather than actually having it glowing. Maybe they could have gone with a lighter color. Would that have even fixed it? Maybe if it was just a slight same color of silver, but just a slight tint of that red in there, would it maybe have given us a more effective read of a glow rather than actually a stain on the figure? As for certainly the rest of the body. This figure, along with the Steppenwolf that we will be looking at in an upcoming review, Again, it's a lot of silver, but to be fair, there's a lot of sculpt happening here as well, that it's, if, if it was just a smooth body, like if we're talking classic body of cyborg, then it would be a lot more, it would be a lot less interesting, but the fact that there's so much going on for it, I think I'm excusing it a lot more for the fact it doesn't have the, the, the additional contrasting wash over top of it. Would it have been appreciated? Oh, of course, absolutely. But I don't think it looks as unfinished as maybe, say, Flash was when we looked at his figure. Uh, he's very spindly in some of the places, like the areas of where his elbow bend will be. And I like that. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be like a figure where it's bulky everywhere. It still possesses the same hinge joints that the figures with more fully realized arms would have. But it looks a lot less, it looks a little more spindly. And then you can see like some of the details, quite nice features that they've sculpted. Like, for example, the tops of the thighs, sort of the inner workings of his body, the more slender, lankier looking knees, as well as his feet, which you can see right there as well. 
He does have, similar to the figures we've looked at before, or sort of that softer plastic lower diaper. And it's so insulting to call it a diaper. That's what most people have just sort of started coining these. But it's basically when you put an overlay of softer plastic to hide a joint or to kind of give it still the, the luxury of being able to move the figure. And it does have, you know, a lot of articulation going for it. But it does, it, it does result in like a gap. And if you have it too far down, I'm doing this deliberately right now to bring it for as far down as I can, you can sort of see how it's been assembled on the inside of the figure. Providing you have it high enough, just kind of like that. I would rather actually have it higher, closer to the torso and leave more gaps down below where the legs, because at least the legs look finished. If you have it the other way around, you're seeing yeah, a big gap between this part of the figure's body and this part of the figure's body. Can we have a look at Cyborg's posability now? Thank you. Bless your face. For the figure's articulation, we'll start first with his head. Uh, it does ro rotate fairly well all the way around. Although the way they've cut down the, the neck area, you can see it sits a little lower. They've left a little bit of clearance, so the head does still rotate. But there are a few places right here. See the back of his head sits a little lower down. Sometimes it does clip against it, and you feel almost like it's rubbing up against it itself. Other than that, though, I mean, it's still freely moving down, up, and you can also rock it back and forth. I think, actually, Cyborg possesses some of the better articulation on the figure, probably because a lot of it is, there's a lot less happening here. Even though, as complicated as that neck may seem, there is a fair bit of space that they've allotted underneath the head to, again, do all the articulation I've already mentioned. As for the arms, now the arms hinge out, and rather interesting about the arms is that the top, this part right here, is really soft plastic. Really, really soft plastic. And it attaches right around here, I guess what you would consider to be the bicep area of the figure. Because of where it's attached and the material that they've used, it means that when you are bringing the arms out, the arm shoulder pieces seem to stay out of the way of things. To also help with that is the figure does have the socketed joint on the inside. And it's clever the way that they've sculpted it, so it looks like it would belong with the rest of his body. It's not smooth. They've actually sculpted it as little coils. I like that. I like that it still looks like a continuation of his existing body. Uh, the arms do rotate all the way around. Bring that arm down there. His arms rotate, like I said, all the way around. Swivels right there. He has a single hinge. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's just a case because because of the way they've sculpted the arm, it would be really hard to get in there and put a second hinge joint. So really, you're only getting just the one, and that, uh, that doesn't really bother me too much, that is. The hands rotate all the way around. You can hinge those back and forth. Then for the upper torso, upper torso is on a ball joint. Lower torso, yes, big gap forming there, but at least he does have lower torso ball joint. The legs split out, and I can't help but notice when I'm splitting the legs... There goes once again the shot of the crotch. Why do I keep always going in, zooming in on the crotch of these figures? And I know you guys have called me on that. But he does have a ratcheted joint. That's the point. That's the reasoning why we're looking so awkwardly close at the figure's crotch. It's just to establish the fact he does have, like, ratcheted joints. Can you hear that? Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. The feet rotate. Legs rotate forward. The legs rotate back. So I know, a fair bit actually allowing you to do this with a figure. Um, you, again, you have the single hinge on the knee, similar to the elbow. Unavoidable, really, just by the nature of the way that the legs are sculpted. I, I don't think they could be able to put a secondary hinge to join in there for more of a narrow designed knee like this. Uh, it does swivel. Did I mention already it swivels at the top? I, I may have. It's possible. The feet also... Uh, now, the feet, they are supposed to, I would imagine, hinge back and forth. Uh, they they don't. Uh, I, I can't get the feet to actually move forward. You can almost see what would be the makings of a peg that allow the feet move back and forth, but they, they don't seem to move at all on this figure. Instead, what you get as a replacement for that is the ankle pivot. You can rotate that back and forth. He does also have toe articulation. So really, despite for the fact that he is a slightly more smaller framed figure, Cyborg's got it going on, if you ask me. He is definitely my favorite or second favorites, possibly. I may be a little just still biased for the fact I, I, I like Batman. But 
you know, speaking of which, let's bring in Batman so you can see the difference between the two. And again, a good comparison too for the types of bodies that these figures possess. While Batman is more the traditional bulky figure that has fully realized arms, limbs, well, limbs in general, Cyborg is a little more deconstructed, a little more limber and slimmer in some of the areas. But he actually translates to be a really nice looking figure. I know looking at it, it's, it's, it's again, it's a lot of silver. It's from head to toe, silver, silver, silver. It's, it's still something to talk about that a contrasting wash would have been helpful to bring out some of the details. But I don't feel like it looks as unfinished as the flash that we looked at before. While he may not have come with one, I can at least cheat and use one of the flight stands I got included with a Superman to have Cyborg displayed in flight pose, which might possibly be the way I'm going to display for the figure. I mean, you know, I think most people, when they're picking these figures up for themselves, they already have maybe a set idea in their mind how they're going to be displaying the figures. Initially, I was kind of just all for the idea of just displaying them standing, you know, united that's, you know, what they did in the movie, kind of sort of standing next to one another. But I think I want to go a little bit outside the box, the mother box, if you will, when it comes to Cyborg and maybe display him in a flight pose. I just kind of like the way it looks. And again, you know, speaking of mother boxes, I, I can't help but notice so far the figures that we've looked at checking off the boxes. Flash, no. Tactical Suit Batman, no. Aquaman, certainly no. And Cyborg, none of these figures have actually come included with mother boxes. I don't think that either Darkseid or Steppenwolf come with them either. It's really a shame that McFarlane didn't package Mother Boxes. Well, you only needed to package them with three of the figures. It would have been nice to be able to display these figures with the three Mother Boxes. I mean, again, I'm comparing it to Hot Toys. Hot Toys for three at least of the figures didn't come packaged with Mother Boxes. For the amount of plastic, maybe it, w it met the quota of how much plastic that they want to use for the figures. But, you know, it would have been nice that these figures, at least three of them, would have come included with Mother Boxes, despite that being the case. I like the look of Cyborg, and I got to think to myself, McFarlane likes to reuse their molds, and to get as much mileage out of this particular mold, what could they do? Well, I mean, they could give different variations, because he kind of changes a bit in the movie, changes his look, but of course, he does also have that face shield plate that go covers over top of his face. I'm sure if they haven't already done it or haven't already announced it and I may have missed it, I, I'm pretty willing to bet that we're, we're going to be getting a face shield cyborg. I don't know if they're going to call it face shield cyborg. Does he actually have a name in the movie? Maybe it is face shield cyborg, but I'm sure at some point we are going to be getting ourselves a face shield cyborg. Mark my words. Have you picked up the figure for yourself? If you have, let me know. Weigh in. We can sort of shoot the breeze. Tell me you know, down below if you've picked up Cyborg for yourself, and if you have, let me know what you guys think of the figure, or even just based on this review. We are now checked off another figure from this wave. We still have to look at the return Superman suit, which is the black and silver. I'm really looking forward to that. There's the traditional blue and red costume, and then we're going to be looking at Steppenwolf, Darkseid, check, check, check. Finally getting to have a chance to look at these, because as I stated in the review of Batman, the tactical suit Batman, pre-ordered this what seemed like eons ago. If I actually look at the calendar, it was only like a month and a half ago, but it seemed to like take forever for these figures to finally get stocked and, and get shipped out. Now that they're finally here, I'm a little behind. We're, like I said, going to be wrapping up the rest of these reviews. If you are new here, and let's just say you stumbled in, maybe the wind has brought you in. You're a very small person, very light and easy to be carried by the wind. You're now here and you're like, what do I do now? What do I do now? What you can do now, small person being carried by the wind Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're certainly there as well, you're in the area, make sure you turn on the bell notification. Keep your peepers peeled, small wind-carried person. Because like I said, there will be the reviews of the other DC Multiverse, a Justice League Snyder Cut figure reviews lined up coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.